Hello, and welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary, to our lectionary podcasts. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the season of Easter. We're in the sixth Sunday, and we're going to take a, a quick look today at uh, John's first epistle, 1 John chapter 5. It's a quite a, a lovely description of the life of the Christian, bound up within the life and love of God. So it is, it begins, uh, we walk by faith and everyone who, everyone, each one who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So by faith we are born of God and in the waters of holy baptism we'll see we are born of God. So everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, which is an incredible thought that we are now members of his family. But also, everyone who loves the one who, the one who uh, begets, um, loveth him. Everyone who loves the one that begets him, loves the one who is, there we go, who is begotten of him. So this is this swirling John where... Um, so we love the one who begot, begot us, uh, so we're begotten of the Father, just as Christ is, or in that way, in baptism, so also do we love the one who is begotten from him. Now I suppose that could mean that we love Christ, who is begotten of the Father, but also that we love our fellow Christians, um, who also have been born and begotten in the baptismal waters. For this we know that we love the, verse 2, in this we know that we love the children of God. So, um, so this is, it would appear that this first begotten refers to Christians in verse 1 who are begotten of him. How can we say that we love God if we do not love um, the, our family in Christ? In this we know that we love the children of God. Now this is a very interesting Thing. So how do we love the children of God? Well, it is when precisely that in verse 2, hoton, whenever we love God and we keep his commandments. And this is an important uh, point to make because oftentimes um, we're, we're asked, for instance, what does it mean to love your people as a pastor? The best way that we can love our people is actually to love God, to love Christ. For when we love Christ, we carry out his commands. I think of the command that Jesus gave to Peter, uh, do you love me? Well, how do we show that we love Jesus? Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Well, then feed my sheep. That is what we are called to do, especially as pastors, but of course, as the people of God, we show our love for our fellow man, by keeping his commands. And what does it mean to keep his commands? It doesn't seem, simply mean uh, like we're following this rule book, but instead, by keeping his commands, we're actually fulfilling the law of love because when we actually look at the Ten Commandments in, in their positive sense, they're all about love. So honoring our father and mother is simply to show love to them. Uh, Thou shalt not kill is to preserve life and to hold it sacred and to help our neighbor in time of need. The sixth commandment, to not commit adultery, is to show love for our spouse. So that is to live the life of love in verse 2. For that is, verse, for that is the, the love of God. What is it? So that we keep his commandments. Keeping his commandments, by doing that, we live the law of love. And I, I love this. It says... His commandments are not heavy. They're not burdensome. Uh, my yoke is easy, our Lord says, and the burden is light. And this is the way the Christian looks at the law. The law is not some terrible thing that is imposed upon us. But as Christians, when we look at the law, we look at upon it as an opportunity for service. We can say, I delight in your law, O Lord, and by that we mean not simply we do mean that we delight in the Torah, in all the words of our Lord, but we look. But still, it's not just that. 
it's that the Ten Commandments look different to us uh, as Christians. Of course, in as much as we're sinners, they're still burdensome. But in as much as we're Christians, we love to do these things. We love to go to the house of the Lord and worship. We love to uh, honor our parents. We love our spouse. We would not want to steal anything from our neighbors. That's as Christians. Now as we go forward, verse 4, we see for all who are born of God or everyone who is born of God, so we, this begetting language is all over the place, well, conquers the cosmos, conquers the world. And I just love that because in our day and age when things are, you know, they can look pretty bleak and um, it seems like the world is winning and our enemies, the devil, the world, and our sinful self, it certainly seems like the world has the upper hand on us, but not so, not so in the end. For everyone who is born of God is, in fact, the one who conquers the world. And now this is, this is the victory, so this is great, the, the great Nike, Nike word, this is the victory that has victory or conquers, the same word, the Nike, Nike Sasa, this is the victory uh, that is victorious over the world, and that is our faith. So faith might not look like much, and yet in faith, in trusting in God, we receive the victory. Well, of course, who is the one who truly wins the victory? Uh, verse 5, who is this that overcometh the world? Who is the one that, again, Nikon, who is the one that is victorious over the world? Except, of course, the one who, again, believes and First John, again, it's swirling the way we have this, it's repetitive, uh, but it, let, let, we, it sinks in uh, to our heart and to our soul. Uh, the one who is victorious is the one who believes exactly now that Jesus is the Son of God. And remember in First 1, we were told that he that believes uh, that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now we're told that the one who is victorious is the one who believes that Jesus is not simply the Christ, of course he is that, but he is also the very Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten, the one begotten of his Father before all worlds. Now who is this one who is uh, victorious for us? Well, this is the one who comes through, through water and the blood. Now, this is a kind of birth imagery. Um, of course, at a birth, uh, the water and the blood flow as the child comes uh, into this world. Um, so also now the one who is victorious, the, this is, is the one who comes for, through water and the blood, Jesus Christ. Now, again, there's this kind of repetition, but also emphasis here. Um, so it's not by water alone, um, but by water and the blood. So we think of both the water and the blood as cleansing. The water, of course, washes away filth and grime. Water is the source of life. So also blood is it's the lifeblood, we call it. And um, the Spirit testifies to this. Uh, and the spirit, of course, is true. So uh, it is the spirit of truth that we rely on. Now, there are three that, there's the word for martyr, there are three that testify, there are three that bear witness in heaven. Um, that, that is the, the spirit, well, the Holy Spirit, and the and the water, and the blood, and the three are one. Now, uh, we can't help but then think of the cross, I think, and as we uh, think of John's witness in the gospel, that he says, I bear witness to this, which is the fact that when Jesus died, there was a kind of uh, new birth, even as Eve came from the, the side of Adam in the gospel of John, so also the church is born from the side of, of Christ. 
and from his side flowed the water and also the blood. And of course, the blood is that which cleanses us from our sins. Water is the, the source, the life-giving source. Um, even as water flows from the Lamb in the book of Revelation, crystal waters flow. Also, there are images of paradise here. So this seems to matter to John that there are three who bear witness. Again, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who works with us or for us in the water. So the Spirit is active in those baptismal waters, the waters that flow from the side of Christ. And then he's active also in the blood. And I think here we do well to think of especially the chalice as we drink the blood, um, which Christ gives us along with his body in the Holy Supper. And in that sense, it's, um, the, the wine, of course, is a, is a picture of celebration and of joy and of the heavenly banquet. But the wine also we might think of as, um, you know, as vine, as, as the fruit of the vine, and by it uh, we are cleansed internally. And Christ's lifeblood also then becomes our life. And uh, these three are one. They work together in concert. So thank you for um, spending a little time with us today. And we wish you a continued uh, blessings uh, during this season of Easter. Thank you.